dear students uh, welcome to introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology course lecture number four i'm dr Pravez ahmad in this particular lecture we will have a discussions on the questions uh, which are at first uh, we have to have a discussion on the question that when did nanotechnology start uh, then we will move toward a second question that are there nanoparticle in nature uh, at then we will have to move towards another question that is when did modern nanotechnology start and at the end we will try to answer the question that how has nanotechnology uh, developed so let's proceed towards uh, the first question which is when did nanotechnology uh, start so uh, be remember whenever we we have these questions i mean so we, we are asking about the origin of the nanotechnology so uh, one have question in mind that whether nanotechnology already existed in nature or it is being uh, I mean, invented by the scientists as a new thing so be remembered that nanotechnology is not a new thing uh, i mean uh, nanotechnology is not a new idea actually nanoparticle have been existed in the nature for thousands of years so what we can say in short in short we can say that nanotechnology is not new because all the things that we have inside the nanotechnology or nanoscience that is already existed in nature for thousands of years so a good example uh, uh, an example are the evidence for that uh, is that the Egyptian use ink containing nanoparticles uh, of black pigments I mean that is in the history I mean in history the Egyptians uh, they use the ink containing nanoparticles uh, as a black uh, pigment uh, similarly nanoparticle of lead sulfide were used by the Romans uh, to dye their hair black I mean uh, I mean that is also an example from the history uh, that is uh, lead sulfide nanoparticle were utilized by Romans before that uh, ink uh, containing nanoparticles they are being utilized by the Egyptian as a black uh, pigment similarly uh, nanoparticle of gold and silver have also been used since the 10th century to color ceramics and uh, stained glass I mean that is also the example that uh, I mean also the evidence actually that nanotechnology is not new rather it existed in nature for thousands of years and these are the three good example I mean that how the people in the past uh, they used nanotechnology for uh, different purposes so uh, now we have a question in mind that are there nanoparticles or nanotechnology existed in nature I mean when we look around the nature we, we see the animal uh, we see the uh, different insect uh, we see the plant so we ask the questions that is there any proof for the existence of nanotechnology or nanoparticle in the nature so uh, of course uh, we have uh, nanoparticle or we have nanotechnology that already existed in the nature so uh, what are the example if we say that nanotechnology it's really existed in nature or the nature really have uh, the nanotechnology so what are the example so here you can see the example of the nanotechnology in nature the first uh, example here you can see also it in the figure and you people might have observed that in your uh, you people might have seen it in your houses uh, or in your hostel that is uh, insect and laser are able to stick to the walls and sometimes you might be I mean you might be wondering that why we human being cannot why we can't stick to the wall just like the lizard and other insect so it is because uh, the insect uh, that is the lizard they can stick to the walls uh, because of the nanostructures on their feet their feet have smaller nanostructures object that is smaller nanoparticle size object uh, I mean which can easily with the help of which they can easily stuck with the material of the wall so this why i mean so they, they they can easily stuck there uh, uh and they they and also the other insect they can easily stuck there because they have a uh, nanoscale object uh, with their feet or with their uh, hands so this is the example of the uh, existence of nanotechnology in nature 
Another example is that of the spider web. Uh, this because spider webs are made from uh, a super strong nanofibers. Uh, super strong nanofibers uh, is being utilized by uh, the spiders uh, for making the web. Uh, so it is also the example of uh, what is also the example about the existence of the nanotechnology uh, in nature. Another example for the exhaustion of nanotechnology in nature is uh, butterfly wings uh, because butterfly wings contain shiny reflective nano crystal. So when light falls on those crystals, so it produces different beautiful colors which you people normally observe. So whenever you see the butterfly, you, you see the shiny butterfly. So I mean, uh, you, you should know that. Uh, by your knowledge from the nanotechnology that uh, butterflies uh, wing contain shiny reflective nanocrystal. I mean we have nanocrystals and the butterflies wings. So just because of those nanocrystal they have the interesting uh, nanoscale optical properties with the help of which you can see those uh, shinies. Uh, I mean, so you, you can see the shiny environment. You can see that there is shining color just because of the reflections from those uh, nano crystals. Uh, so another example is that of uh, uh, chloroplasts and plant cell. Uh, so what actually that do? Uh, these are basically the the nano factories that harness the sun energy to make glucose. I mean. Uh, we have nanotechnology in nature, we have nanotechnology not only in animals but also in plants because in plant uh, we have chloroplast. So chloroplast in the plant cells is basically, you do, uh, I mean they are basically the nanofactories, uh, nanofactories for what? Nanofactories for harnessing the sun energy uh, to make uh, glucose. I mean we get the glucose from the chloroplast uh, in the plant cell. Uh, because of uh, the nano factories that is uh, there inside the, the, the chloroplast. So this is also another a good example of the existence of nanotechnology uh, in the nature. So uh, nanotechnology scientists try to copy nature's nanoparticles to make new material that are uh, useful. I mean uh, just like the other sciences uh, even in the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology the scientists they are also trying to copy the nature and trying to make a better material than the than the one that existed in the uh, in the nature. That's why we have movies like uh, uh, Superman, like uh, we have Spider Man, etc. Uh, that is just trying to utilize uh, I mean the concept of nature and try to imagine uh, the future or the possible future uh, in the form of uh, movies. So now uh, we have another question in mind that when did modern nanotechnology start? I mean this is a very important question that normally the people uh, or the student have in their mind whenever they are studying the course nanotechnology. So the idea uh, about the nanotechnology or for the existence of the nanotechnology was first given by an American physicist. Uh, his name was uh, Richard uh, Penniman. Uh, and he gave this idea about the nanotechnology in uh, 1959 by saying that there is plenty of room at the bottom. By plenty of room at the bottom, he means that if we utilize or we, if we manage to uh, manipulate the, the material at a smaller scale, so uh, we can get remarkable thing. I mean that was the first, that was the first time that uh, someone gave the idea about uh, I mean the remarkableness of the smaller scale uh, material. So Richard Penman was the first man, the first American physicist who gave the idea or uh, who gave the suggestion for the existence of for the existence of the remarkable properties of the nanoscale uh, material in uh, 1959s. And be remember he offered a prize of thousands uh, dollar for first working motor less than 1 uh, one over 64th of an uh, inch across uh, that is smaller than uh, a pen hat. I mean that, that was the prize he awarded for uh, that particular machine. And then the prize was claimed, uh, the, pro the, the, the prize was claimed just a year later by uh, Bill Mac uh, McLellan 
a scientist working in California. So scientists have made structures smaller, uh, smaller and uh, smaller uh, with the passage of time. So this work is now called uh, nanotechnology. So now the question arises that when the term nanotechnology was first developed or who was the man who first uh, called this technology, the nanoscale technology as nanotechnology. So the term was first used in 1964 by Norio uh, Tengochi. Uh, Narian Tengochi was basically a material scientist in Japan and he for the first time uh, uh, in 1964 he utilized or uh, he called that science as uh, nanotechnology. So uh, I mean the, the word nanotechnology is basically introduced by Norio in 1974 and be, um, remember that he was a material scientist from Japan. So uh, how has nanotechnology developed? So uh, I mean this is also one of the fundamental question that normally the people ask. So be remember uh, nanotechnology the development the rapid development of nanotechnology start with the development of the modern equipment uh, because with, without the modern, equi uh, modern equipment the development uh, of uh, nanotechnology was just like a dream. And the scientist was unable to do the remarkable thing until unless that didn't have uh, the, the latest uh, apparatus. So it was just because of the uh, new piece of equipment that helped the scientist uh, to grow rapidly at the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology. So uh, the remarkable thing, the most remarkable thing in this regard occurred in 1981 when the scientists that developed uh, the scanning tunneling microscopy. Uh, the scanning tunneling microscopy, it was invented and allowed the scientists to see the nano worlds. I mean, that was uh, the first remarkable thing uh, that the scientists ever achieved in the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology uh, because with the scanning tunneling microscopy, they able, uh, I mean, it's able the scientists to interact uh, with the nano worlds. So using an STM, it was possible to see the individual atoms and even more than around. I mean, with the help of that, they were not only able uh, to see the object, the nanoscale object, but with the help of that, they were also able to manipulate them, to move them around. And just like we mentioned about the standing turning microscopy in the previous lecture, so they, 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 they done a remarkable thing. And one of the most remarkable thing which the scientists have done with the STM uh, or with standing turning microscopy is that in 1989 uh, an STM was used to move 35 xenon atoms onto a tiny piece of nickel. And what was the purpose? The purpose was uh, those atoms, those xenon atoms was used to spell the name of the company that the scientists work for. And you can imagine what was that name or what was uh, uh, what was it called. So here you can see it by yourself that was called IBM and this IBM uh, you know that 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 was being written from 35 xenon atoms and those 35 xenon atoms they were being I mean moved around they were being misplaced they were being arranged with the help of uh, STM xenon atom they are being uh, I mean is utilized uh, by STM with the help of STM and they spell the company's name IBM from the xenon atom. So that's all for this lecture hope you enjoy so stay tuned with the next lecture next lecture will be lecture number five and that lecture and that lecture we will talk about the properties of the materials uh, we will discuss about the unique characteristic of the nanoparticle and along with that, we will have examples of unusual properties of the nanomaterials. So stay tuned with the next lecture because that would also be very much interesting and will increase your knowledge and the field. Still, uh, stay with us. Till then, bye-bye.